हेलो वेलकम टू द सेल्फ लर्निंग पॉडकास्ट बाय डॉक्टर सुषमा सिंह लेट अस स्टार्ट डिस्कशन ऑन यूनिट इलेवन फेडरलिज्म फेडरलिज्म इज अ डायनामिक थ्योरी ऑफ नेशन एंड स्टेट बिल्डिंग इट इज प्राइमरली अ थ्योरी अबाउट इंस्टीट्यूशनलाइज पॉलिटिकल कॉपरेशन एंड कलेक्टिव को एग्जिस्टेंस In other words federalism is a grand design of living together in the matrix arrangement of what Daniel Eleazar conceptually termed as self rule plus shared rule its hallmark is to cite Rashiduddin Khan unity of polity and polarity of society as a theory of nation building federalism seeks to define state society relationship in such a manner as to allow autonomy of identity of social groups to flourish in the constitutionally secured and mon- mandated institutional and political space the federal constitution recognizes the special cultural rights of the people especially the minorities in this sense it is very close to the theory of multiculturalism yet different because the niceness of federalism lies in its fundamental stress on institutionalization of diversities and facilitating socio political cooperation between two sets of identities through various structural mechanism of shared rule as a state building theory federalism has three essential components formation of state and territorialization of federal local administration in such a manner as to promote closer contact between people and government distribution of federal powers on the non centralized basis and creation of the institutions of shared rules the first component essentially means creation of the institutions of self rule the institutions of self rule at the micro le- macro level means creation of states and at micro level it refers to the institutions of local governments states or regional units of administration are usually formed on the basis of relative continuity or discontinuity of spatial interaction pattern between people culture and territory this in other words means formation of states on the principle of homogeneity with viability the state system may include several sub state arrangements like regional councils or district councils to cater to the specific cultural and administrative requirements of the people living in geo ethnic enclaves the second component refers to the division of federal powers and functions on a relatively autonomous basis where each unit has sufficient legislative competence executive authority and financial resources to perform its function in the allotted domain efficiently and effectively 
In recent years, the notion of competence, division and distribution has come into being. Competence refers to the functionally elaborated and constitutionally protected capacity of the various units of federal regional administration. Bernardi Segdo, following a Spanish example, has classified different kinds of competencies into the following five categories. First, the integral competency, those in which a single authority, usually the state, has attributed all kinds of public functions regarding a particular matter. Second, exclusive but limited competencies, those in which one authority enjoys full competence but only to a certain extent in a particular matter. Hence, it is not the function but the matter that is fragmented. Third, shared competencies those in which both the state and autonomous community are entitled to exercise complementary parts of the same function over the same matter. This would be the case rather frequently in matters in which the state has reserved for itself basic legislation and the autonomous community has taken up legislative development. And fourth, concurring competencies. Those in which the competencies of the state and those of the autonomous community are distinct, but coverage on the same physical object. And the fifth one is indistinct competencies, those awarded both to the state and to the autonomous community without any sort of distinction and which enable them to deal with the matter in different ways. What follows from above? is the fact that competence distribution is a manifold exercise of identification and distribution of subjects on the basis of territorial import and community significance of the subject either for ex exclusive or shared control of policy making and its execution. In the arena of shared competency, contents of the policy over a subject are divided and distributed. This, in other words, means jurisdictional partitioning of the subject. In the realm of allotted capacity, each unit enjoys almost complete autonomy of decision and execution. One may hear like to mention that the fact federalism has over the years evolved as policy science, where basic objectives of the discipline seem to be efficiency and achievement of targeted goals and policies. This is a step further growth of federal theory where it draws its critical resources from the disciplines of public administration and management. As a devolutionary theory of administration and governance, federalism and federal system may follow either one or combination of the following arrangements like non-centralization decentralization and deconcentrations. Non-centralization refer to the non-hierarchical allocation of competence 
decentralization means conditional bureaucratic distribution of competence from one federal structure to other subordinate authority and structure and deconcentration means a partial offloading of usually executive authority and functions from one authority to subordinate authority an essential attribute of federalism is the creation of a federal political culture in which differences are sorted out through mutual negotiation and consensus is built on matters of common concern and national importance the third component relates to the institutions of shared rules this takes out federalism from being only a system of self governance to collect collective governance on matters of trans local importance and mutual concern shared rules institutions may take variety of institutional shapes like journal council ministerial council interstate council independent constitutional authorities like boards commissions planning and other regulatory bodies the institutions of shared rules has important objective of laying down the policy norms and developing uniformity of outlook on matters of interrogational and national significance and resolving interstate disputes interestingly there is not any exclusive and universal model of federalism two federal polities share some characteristics in common but differ widely in structure and process of governance federal polity builds its exec- exclusive federal union and federal nation according to its own distinct social composition cultural differentiation among the social groups regional or sub regional variation of identity and development and desired objectives and specifications of its constitutionalism and nationalism it is precisely the reason that each federal polity constitutes a distinct class of federalism so is the case with indian federalism now let us wind up the session and take rest thank you very much for engaging yourself with the self learning podcasts